Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Scarender. And today we're going up against Crimson Sea Badge. And uh, yeah, he's not a pocket tuber actually, so make sure to check this guy out. He's very charismatic and um, he only has roughly over 100 subscribers and should definitely have more because his quality is actually fairly, fairly good. I'm not even joking around about that, so give him a watch. He has got very good content and like I said, He's just overall very charismatic, and I can definitely see this guy going places. So, anyway, he wanted a new game against me, and I wanted that for some time, but never really got around to it for different reasons. But I was finally free to do just so. And as you guys know, not that comfortable in UU, but that hardly matters. Uh, it can always be fun, and as it begins, Pocketubers tend to be a lot more, um, not as um, <laughs> as hard-headed, I guess you should say. Then we look at this team, we've got Entei, Pidgeot, Crocodile, Florges, Empoleon, and Galventula. Galventula, of course, is the obvious lead, and uh, if you look at my team, i got the Articuno, Tentacruel, Meowstic, Clawless, uh, Trevenant, and Rhyperior. And really here, I can see from the get-go that the only Pokemon I need to get out of my way is the Crocodile and Empoleon. And if they are gone, then my Meowstic can set up, and it is the Stored Power, Resto Chesto, set with Calm Mind and Barrier. So it should have no issue to actually dealing with this guy. Uh, but, like I said, I need to get the crocodile out of the way, and I really need to stop Pidgeot from making evolving so it doesn't get to, to be faster than me when things are going down. But that is really the only thing, and I'm gonna lead off with my Articuno, because Articuno is not on my best bet, but actually it's the only Pokemon I can deal with Galventula in some fashion properly, because I do expect him to set up something like stick webs before he even start attacking, and uh, basically it's dangerous for me to bring a Rhyperior in case it packs the Grass move, which is kind of obvious. So, of course, with all of this in mind, let's go. So, yeah, let's go. So anyway, at the get-go here, I'm just gonna go for a deep freeze. Like I said, I do expect him to set up stick web and whatnot, and uh, I can't really have stick web on my team. Uh, I can probably work around it, but in a constant sweeping position, I need my Meow Stick to be as fast as possible, really. So, I can't have that, I can so I have to stay in, basically, and I didn't want to risk off in Hurricane, because well, I don't pack Campanile like a certain somebody else is doing, and look at this thunder! It does over half! Of course it does. Uh, I just went for Roost just to scout how much damage it really does. Because if it was over half, then I probably should have stayed in and finished him off. But I can't do that now, now can I? So basically here, I'm just gonna stay in. I'm just gonna go for damage. Articuno is not gonna make a major change in this battle anyway. Because it can't cope with Entei. It is that simple. And he has a paralyzation here, it won't matter because of one reason and one reason only And that is that I do strike here and actually hit him Which means that, I mean it doesn't kill him, but it sure is close, so it's pretty strange mid-max going there But, um, like I said, I do hit him, so I don't mind, I definitely was firing off the Kuna from the get-go anyway But having this Pokemon at this low amount of HP that uh, Galvangel is now Actually makes me bring my Tentacruel, my Tentacruel is Assault Vested so it's actually made it to um, make people feel safe to stay in, so I actually can go for a rapid spin or retaliate with a move. So then that was exactly what he does. He thinks he can strike me down, and he cannot. Obviously here, um, Thunder does still a lot of damage, and um, definitely this was a risky play, but I need, like I said, the stick with to be gone. And having Galventual out of the way makes me a bit more happier. And like I said, I couldn't switch in Rhyperior because of the obvious issue that is the energy ball. So anyway, Entei is coming in, and I have an Entei on my own, so I know exactly what he's thinking. He's gonna go for a Bulldoze, and Rhyperior is fairly bulky, and in conjunction with the monster that is um, the Solid Rock, he can actually cope with this quite well. But it does a bit more damage than it is supposed to, and that means one thing, and that is that this is definitely banded. So, I do expect him to switch out, and I expect him to not bring in the thing of Pidgeot, because I could go for a rock move. So I went for an Earthquake, and look at this! The dead Empoleon's in, and that is one dead Penguin! Boom! Boom! Gone! <laughs> Very lucky, of course. Empoleon definitely was a threat to my Meow Stick with the Steel Typing. So that is great! That is truly, truly commendable! And here's the second thing that went very fairly well, actually. Because of Solid Rock, I don't go down to his Earthquake, and it did more than was supposed to because of Life Orb and whatnot. And I can retaliate with an Earthquake, which means that now my Meowsic has nothing, nothing to fear. 
it is free to go, and that means that of course Riparior or the Desert Troyer has actually showed it milled and brawn in battle, which also means that I will give him the chance to die in peace. And we're definitely expecting him to go for an hurricane, but actually packs the hidden power ground. Which means that we got a problem. I can't bring in Tentacruel to soak a hit, so I expect him to think that uh, my Clawlister, which I know can take an hurricane, that he will switch out to his Flawless, so I'm just gonna bring Clawlister and pull a double switch to a Tentacruel, uh, just to get a slush bomb off or whatnot, because he has nothing out to resist that. But he stays in! And, uh, yeah, shit. <laughs> that is not good. And of course, this hurricane does a lot of damage. And I mean a lot of damage. But it doesn't kill me though, it doesn't kill, which is a great and very formidable tentacruel really. But of course, that hardly matters because I do switch at him, so he can't really defend himself now, can he? So anyway, I'm gonna bring Amber yet again, and this time we're going for the finishing touches. So he's gonna strike me with a hurricane, and well... He has a 30% chance of confusion, so what the hell, why not kick that one in? Thank you, awesome. But I do break through here, and that is great. Lolis just won't have any of that. He's focused, He's he might seem confused, but he knows how to kill. And um, he shows his brawn here, of course, and taking him out. So he's gonna bring the Entei here, and he's gonna decide to lock himself into Sacred Fire. I don't mind, because I can just set up with my Meow Stick. And uh, I actually lived this Sacred Fire, which definitely surprised me. I thought it was gonna take me out. But he do get the burn, which means that my killer, my assassin, my clawless, they will just feel that, alright, if I'm gonna go die, then I'm gonna die by killing myself, I'm not gonna burn to death, he's gonna strike himself and, of course, fall. And, um, yeah, I mean, that is, that is his problem, I can deal with that. But anyway, I'm gonna just go into Meow Six, set up barriers, because I can take this fairly well, I don't have to worry about him, because he's being locked to Sacred Fire, which means that I am on the okay side, but... I didn't calc for hacks, and he actually gets a one hit KO on my meow stick. And I did calc here the barrier, um, the amount of effects that would have done, but hey, that's what happens. That is just a part of the game, you just have to accept that, really. And uh, to be completely honest here, if I, I would definitely had it in mind, and I laughed so hard about it because the only way I was gonna lose was to score the crit. And I'd rather be critted first turn and have it fully set up and then be critted and break through. And as I said there, there was no way because I have Resto Chesto Meow Stick that he was going to win against my Meow Stick because even with the one barrier he would not be close to it KO. Which also would have meant that uh, I could actually pull up a double barrier and then be in a great range of taking him out. So yeah, really, it was actually really fun. And like I said, I couldn't help stop laughing about it because it was... Very unexpected. It was it really was. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this battle. Of course, it was definitely like I said, a very fun battle, and it was very fast paced because none of us have a real like bulky team, and the the real bulk we had was no real usage in this battle. Obviously, it was just hard on defenses, and it turned out to be a fast paced and very great battle because of that. And like I said. I had a small advantage in the last turn there, but 10% is where it is, and uh, let's say I did pull a um, barrier sweep off, that would still mean that we had a 5 turn of rest rest barrier sets before I was being fully uh, fully invested. And yes, Sacred Fire's people would have run out by then, but who knows, they might just score a crit anyway. So um, yeah, it would have just ended in a bit of stall before I was able to sweep if that was the case and things worked my way. So, uh, he winning was definitely, I, I felt that it was fair, I, I really do, and I got a lot of usage of this, and uh, yeah, he uploaded this battle too on his channel, so make sure to check this one out. Like I said, I'm gonna link his channel down below, make sure to subscribe to him, because he's definitely, like I said, he's very charismatic, uh, he's definitely a nice guy, I, I kinda like those kind of tubers, and I think you guys do too. So anyway guys, if you like this battle of course, don't forget to leave just that, and uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Do it! <laughs> and yeah, have a good day guys, as always. And have a yeah, great day and stuff like that. Right? Sky's limit. Uh. <laughs> Bye guys.